ha, ha, ra, 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 all right. Well, video. Are, we, are we talking about you know some some brave, brave some braised beef short ribs? You know, got a big ass Dutch oven, plenty of room for all the bones. So hold them for a nice sear, and then we'll give it a good old red wine braise. It's gonna be real rich. It's gonna be garlicky, oniony, fatty. Uh, and we're gonna let that cook for a long time. It's gonna be tender. It's gonna be a nice little topper for the risotto. It's gonna be very creamy. A little mascarpone. Romano cheese. You know, creamy, heavy, light. It's gonna be all over the place. Here in my hand, I hold some Colorado born and braised beef ribs, the short ones. A lot of fat in here. It's great. We're gonna cook these long time, slow. Low, red wine, garlic, onions, salt, pepper, time. The time it takes. Also time the year. If I could get a hand, I do need some salt and pepper on these bad boys. I'll work it if you work it. Shake it. Shake it. We'll yeah. shake it if you, you work shake it. You shake it, I'll work it, girl. Let's go. Oh, a little more, a little more, a little more. Boom, 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 boom. This one. Golden Coast. Here we have a well salted, well peppered beef rib. And now we're gonna wait for that oil to get hot. All right, we've got our heavily seasoned beef short ribs. A lot of salt, pep. These guys are gonna cook for a while, and that's fine because they're not the most tender cut of meat. That's why we're braising them. Oh yeah, look at that. Are we ready for this? Watch the sizzle. These are gonna get nice and gold and crispy on each side. Just a little sear, we're not gonna cook them all the way through this way. Just for texture and rendering. Ooh, that's we're keeping this open there because if you cover it, it's gonna to start to steam. When in reality, a sear, you want that crust. It'll stay open four or five minutes each side. I'll show you when it's done. Now let's take a look at these. It looks like you're already getting some color, some heat. Look at that sizzle. It's it's almost hard to the touch. That's exactly what you're looking for. Golden brown, already getting that down there. We're gonna flip all these over. Oh. It's like hearing Stairway to Heaven for the first time, or the hundredth time. Look at it. It's got, oh, it's got the color, it's got the, oh, it's a little crusty. The bone's protruding, it's got a little tender. We're gonna pull these now, let them sit. Oh my goodness. If you could smell this, you would smell good beef. Mirepoix in French translates to mirepoix in English. It doesn't mean it. Mirepoix consists of carrots, onion, celery. To a lot of chefs, it's considered the holy trinity. We're gonna finish off this mirepoix. We're rounding third base. It's about to be a home run of flavor. Mince those onions. Now that we've rendered all the fat, we have quite a bit in this sweet little Dutch oven. But we're not trying to deep fry our mirepoix. We just want a little bit of oil to break it down. So we're gonna... Here's the holy trinity going into its hot bath of oil. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my god, right away the aromas. That onion hits. 
we're gonna put this down real low. We want to get these onions to be translucent. We're not trying to burn them, not trying to crisp them. We're just trying to break them down. Huh. Huh. Take a look at that. See inside there. Fantastic. Oh, I'm excited for this. I'm excited. So I was talking to a fellow at the wine store and I said, I need to deglaze, I need to braise but I also kind of want to sip on it. And so this is his recommendation. Maybe it's good, you tell me. So deglazing is good to get all the meaty bits and all the stuff that's kind of stuck to the bottom of the pan. You want to bring it up. So that's what this is for. But you don't want that rough wine flavor. It's, you know, it's kind of hot. You're not looking for an alcoholic sauce. That's why you're going to reduce this. I'm gonna get rid of that. Oh, I'm gonna get rid of that alcohol. Oh my goodness. While well, we're doing that, we're gonna let this reduce. And a little more wine. We're gonna add some tomato paste to that. Thicken that up. Alright, now we're gonna add a little tomato paste. Oh, oh! It's like a DQ blizzard. Check that. Oh! <laughs> Just a little tablespoon. Give that a little citric acid, and it'll help thicken it up quite a bit. And we're going to let this reduce for a nice hot moment. So we've got our seared beef short ribs that are going back in to the braids. They're not cooked all the way through. I'm not going to show you. That would ruin the secret. Now we're going to go real low, real slow. And these babies are going away for two and a half hours. We're at 300. And now we're going to add some bone broth, beef fashion. And we're going to drown these bad boys. Oh my goodness. These are going to stew in this lovely braise. Oh my goodness. All right, we got some beef broth. And just a little bone broth. Keep it healthy. Whew. All right, so before we set these off to sail the seas of flavor, and it's going to take about two and a half hours, we're going to throw in our bouquet de garni. So this is going to be great. Going in together and it's coming out together. Oh baby. Sweet dreams. I will see you in the morning. Our beef ribs, they are tender, they have cooled off, and they're just lacking just a little more zest, all right? So we're gonna place them back inside of this, we're gonna call it a consomme, all right? <laughs> oh, <big league> <laughs> oh my. <laughs>